This is a picture test in practical neuroanatomy. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer, then replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the sectional anatomy of the brain. Conscious proprioception sensibility from the left knee joint involves which of the labeled pathways? This is a section of the caudal part of the medulla oblongata at the level of sensory decussation. First, let's identify the tracts. One is the anteriorly located pyramid containing corticospinal fibers. The axons of these fibers originate from neurons in the cortex, as the name indicates, and they decussate at a lower level than this one. They decussate, in fact, at the level of motor decussation. It's called motor decussation because these corticospinal fibers, they carry motor information from frontal and other cortices. These motor information are important for the execution of learned, skilled movements. So the fibers here in one are motor and not involved with sensory function. Two is the spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve. This tract consists of sensory fibers derived mainly from the trigeminal nerve, but also includes fibers from facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus nerves. In other words, all the nerves that contribute to the sensory innervation of the head. And this tract descends from where the trigeminal nerve is attached to the pons, it descends from there to the medulla, down to the level of the upper cervical spinal cord, hence the name spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve, and it relays on the underlying uh, spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. The tract and the nucleus mediate pain and temperature sensations from the head, and it is not involved with proprioception from the knee. Three and five, they represent fasciculus cuneatus, the one on the left and the one on the right. Four is the medially located fasciculus gracilis. All these fasciculi, they were their fasciculus gracilis and or fasciculus cuneatus, they constitute the dorsal column medial lemniscus system. And this system conveys information about position sense as well as fine touch and pressure. At lower spinal levels, the fibers of this system, they constitute the fasciculus gracilis, and they carry the above mentioned uh, sensory modalities from the lower limb, including the knee. Then fibers are continuously added to the system from the lateral side as the spinal cord is ascended, so that at mid thoracic level and above, fasciculus cuneatus is added from the lateral side. And the fibers here uh, in fasciculus cuneatus are concerned with upper trunk and upper limb. Thus, both three and five fasciculus cuneatus are not involved in the sensory pathway from the lower limb. Now, since at this location, the fibers of the dorsal column system are not crossed yet, thus, four, which is the left fasciculus gracilis, is involved in the conscious proprioception sensibility from the left knee joint. Name the two components of area A. This is a section of the midbrain showing the cerebral peduncle comprising the crust cerebri, which is darkly stained fibers, and the substantia nigra. Substantia nigra is the area A. Substantia nigra is a motor nucleus that consists of two regions, pars compacta, the compact zone, and pars reticularis, the reticular zone. The compact zone is made up of distinctly pigmented neurons, while the reticularis contains non-pigmented neurons. And the substantia nigra is reciprocally connected to the corpus striatum. Its neurons undergo degeneration and Parkinson's disease. In B, identify the cranial nerve formed by fibers B. 
the interrupted dark lines represent a nerve tract. Note here that in this stained section, nerve tracts are darkly stained. The cranial nerve in question appears to emerge from the midbrain in the interpeduncular fossa. So it is the oculomotor nerve. Note that there are two nerves attached to the midbrain, two cranial nerves. Anteriorly is the oculomotor nerve and posteriorly is the trochlear nerve. Centrally, the nerve is connected to nuclei located in the ventral part of the periaqueductal gray matter. The oculomotor nucleus is located at the level of the red nucleus, and you can see here the site of the red nucleus in the tegmentum of the midbrain. It is the same as the level of the superior colliculus of the tectum. The trochlear nerve arises from the posterior part of the midbrain in its caudal part, level with the inferior colliculus. Identify the layers A and B. Name two types of cells in A. This is a histological section of the cerebellar cortex, stained with hematoxylin and eosin. Note that the cortex consists of three layers. A is the outermost layer and is called the molecular layer. B is Purkinje cell layer. The deepest layer is the granule cell layer. The molecular layer A consists of two types of cells, stellate cells located in the upper region of the layer and basket cells located deeply adjacent to Purkinje cell layer. The Purkinje cell layer is characteristic for the cerebellum. It is only one cell deep, but due to the large size of the Purkinje cell bodies, it is easily identified. Purkinje cells are flask-shaped cells. Their dendrites pass into the molecular layer where they undergo branching, profuse branching. The axon arises at the base and provides the sole efferent pathway from the cerebellar cortex. Match the following effects of lesion with the lettered structures. This is a section of the upper pons showing the basilar part and tegmentum. Note that the section is stained with Luxol fast blue and neutral red. The Luxol fast blue stains nerve fibers, therefore white matter appears blue. Neutral red stains nerve cell bodies, therefore gray matter consists of collections of pink or red staining cells. Note here the upper part of the fourth ventricle, deep to the floor and close to the midline, that's to say medially located, is a longitudinal fasciculus, which appears blue. This is the medial longitudinal fasciculus, A, which consists of ascending and descending fibers that connect vestibular and cochlear nuclei with nuclei controlling extraocular muscles, the oculomotor, trochlear, and abducent nuclei. Thus, the medial longitudinal fasciculus is involved in coordinating head and eye movements. Its damage results in impairment of conjugate eye movements. For example, in horizontal movements, the abducens nucleus, which supplies lateral rectus muscle, projects via the medial longitudinal fasciculus from the level of the pons, where the abducens nucleus is located, to the contralateral oculomotor nucleus in the rostral part of the midbrain. To be specific, the part of the oculomotor nucleus that supplies medial rectus muscle. So a lesion in the medial longitudinal fasciculus results in absent adduction of the ipsi lateral eye. This is usually associated with jerky movements, nystagmus, of the abducting eye, and it is called internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Damage to the medial longitudinal fasciculus also results in diplopia. So A matches with 1. Its damage of the medial longitudinal fasciculus results in diplopia and nystagmus. Diplopia is double vision.
that is if the right eye is affected the patient will see double when looking to the left seeing two images side by side b is the lateral lemniscus which consists of fibers derived mainly from cochlear nuclei in the medulla the lateral lemniscus terminates in the inferior colliculus of the midbrain and conveys information related to hearing thus its damage results in auditory dysfunction statement 3 C is the medial lemniscus this is an ascending tract that originates in the medulla from second order neurons in the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus axons of the cell bodies cross the midline and ascend in the medial lemniscus which continues through the brain stem to the thalamus at the medullary levels the medial lemniscus lies adjacent to the midline with its long axis oriented anterior posteriorly in the pons where it is labeled here it rotates the medial lemniscus rotates so that it almost lies horizontally in the ventral part of the tegmentum the medial lemniscus is part of the dorsal column pathway that's to say involved with transmission of sensations of discriminative touch vibration and sense of position damage of the posterior column medial lemniscus system causes ataxia or incoordination of movement the reason is that the brain is unable to direct motor activity properly without sensory feedback about the current position of the parts of the body now this ataxia that results from damage of the dorsal column medial lemniscus system is called sensory ataxia four statement four sensory ataxia is particularly pronounced when the patient's eyes are closed preventing visual compensation patients have a great difficulty walking unless they watch their limbs if they try to stand erect with their eyes closed and their feet together they sway and may fall if not supported this is what is called clinically Romberg's sign if the patient is ataxic and Romberg's test is not positive it suggests that ataxia is cerebellar in nature D is a bundle of longitudinal pontine fibers these are corticofugal fibers efferents from the cerebral cortex they include uh, corticopontine corticospinal and corticobulbar fibers the corticobulbar fibers are also called corticonuclear since they terminate on motor nuclei of cranial nerves including the facial motor nucleus which is located in the pons but at a lower level than this one these corticonuclear fibers are thus upper motor neuron fibers their damage could result in an upper motor neuron lesion of the facial nerve and this is characterized by contralateral paralysis of lower facial muscles the reason is that these corticobulbar fibers project bilaterally to the part of the facial motor nucleus involved in motor innervation of upper facial muscles but the corticobulbar fibers they project only contralaterally to the part innervating the lower facial muscles thus when there is unilateral upper motor neuron lesion the lower facial muscles contralateral to the lesion are affected on the other hand in lower motor neuron lesion affecting either the facial motor nucleus or the facial nerve itself all the muscles of facial expression ipsilateral to the lesion are affected again i repeat an upper motor neuron lesion which is unilateral the upper facial muscles are saved because the part of the nucleus of the facial nerve that supplies the upper facial muscles receive bilateral projections from the cerebral cortex so if one side is affected it will continue to receive projections from the other side 